Hello, I'm Angela Brown. I'd like to welcome you to a special Hill and Hollow music event. Our first virtual concert online, presented in partnership with Mountain Lake PBS. It's our privilege and pleasure to bring you David Krakauer and Kathleen Tagg performing their signature concert, Breath and Hammer Acoustic. Grab your favorite beverage, find a comfortable chair, sit down and enjoy a fascinating musical journey with Kathleen Tagg and David Krakauer. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here online. We're so happy that you can be together with us in this shared experience with Hill and Hollow and Mountain Lake PBS. And we're gonna take you now on a journey through all kinds of music, different cultures, and different landscapes. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. We're going to start now with a piece by the great Syrian clarinetist and composer, our great friend, Kinan Azme. This is November 22, thank you.
Okay, so thank you very much. We're going to continue now with Claude Debussy's Première Rhapsody, First Rhapsody, that was written in 1910, um, and it was actually written for a rather mundane purpose for the final exam in clarinet at the Paris Conservatory. Every year, one of these pieces gets composed, and this piece probably is one of the great masterpieces. And um, you can hear quotations from Debussy's earlier composition, La Mer, and indeed I think he really hears the sound of the sea. Um, it's a beautiful piece of impressionistic music, and it really reminds me of Monet's painting, The Effects of Fog. So this is the premier rhapsody of Claude Debussy from 1910.
So the next piece we're going to play for you is by Abraham Elstein. And Elstein was one of the great composers for the Yiddish theater. Um, he wrote a lot of hits back in the 20s and 30s, uh, famous hits that were sung by the great stars of the Yiddish theater. And this piece, the Hasidic dance, is a kind of mix of Eastern European Jewish klezmer, um, some light classics, and a bit of sort of Broadway slash vaudeville pizzazz. So this is Abraham Elstein's Hasidic dance.
Thank you very much. We're going to continue now with a composition of my friend John Zorn. Um, John is a saxophonist and composer. He's one of the pillars of the New York avant-garde scene. And this piece, Parzial, is part of a magnum opus of his, which is called The Book of Angels. Many, I think he wrote many hundreds of short compositions that he gave to his various friends and collaborators and said, go for it, make a record out of this. Um, so I made a record, he, he gave me about eight of these tunes. I made a record with my band, Ancestral Groove, and then later um, I brought it in to Kathleen and she really um, reimagined it and orchestrated it in her mind and the orchestration comes out through the piano. So here is John Zorn's Parzial from the Book of Angels, the guardian of the seventh heavenly hall. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I, I know it feels so different to play a concert when uh, we're playing to all of you on the other side of a, of a screen or on the other side of a camera lens. And um, we're so, so, so grateful and thankful to actually be here with you um, in Saranac, New York, and up playing as part of a real live series on our scheduled date at Hill and Hollow Music. And really for us in this time, it's something quite extraordinary. And um, to actually be able to still play a regularly scheduled concert in a very irregular way, um, it's not normal in these times anymore for us to actually be able to play a live concert, even though <laughs> normally we would be looking out at all of your faces instead of not being able to see you on the other side of your screen. But it really means the world and um, to be able to, to play and uh, we, yeah, we are very thankful to be with you in your homes today. So would you like to, um, would you like to tell the people about uh, what we're yes. going to play? This next piece is a piece of mine entitled Berimbau. And um, Berimbau is actually a Brazilian instrument. It's the big cousin um, of some incredibly beautiful instruments that we have uh, in the part of the world where I am from, in the Eastern Cape um, of South Africa. And the bows there, women's instruments, incredibly beautiful, uhadi and mkhube. You have other cousin instruments all over the Southern African region. Um, and there's too many to mention. Um, but this piece was inspired by the big brother of those instruments that come from where I'm born, which is the homeland of Nelson Mandela and so many other great people um, who have made South Africa what they are. And uh, so the idea behind the piece is with that with the bow instruments, you, uh, you either resonate it with a gourd on the chest or in the mouth. And uh, it tends to be a single string and you can change the frequencies, uh, the fundamental note, the bass note that you'll hear. So this piece, I'm going to do an, an introduction, which is all only using one string on the inside of the piano. Now, we all think of the piano as having keys, and we think of it as being more of a percussion instrument. But I have an entire body of strings inside. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I pick one specific string, and like with a violin or a cello or any other string instrument, such as a bow, you can stop the string and put your finger on it, and it will change the notes. So the introductory part is all on a single string, and then you will hear the changing fundamentals. So like in a lot of bow music, especially where I'm from, you will hear two main notes. Do, 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 do. And, um, and that will form the basis. Then, this was a piece I wrote in 2014, which was the 20th anniversary of my country, South Africa's first ever democratic elections. Um, before that, only a tiny minority of the country was able to actually vote. The majority of the country had absolutely no voice and no say. And um, the year 2014 was a big year for me to sit and really reflect on what that meant to be a South African, what it meant to be a South African who looked like me, and what it meant to be a, a South African who was very, very far away from home, sitting in a very cold, frosty New York winter. So this piece really thinking about connection, about origins, about land, earth, and people that I call my own. This is Berenbao. And um, you'll see that I'm going to put on a glove. This is not a magic glove. It just happens to fit in really well with our specific time, pandemic times. But it is a glove I normally put this on. Um, and this is purely to protect the copper strings of the piano. Um, which don't like being touched by fingers. So folks at home, should you wish to touch a piano on the inside, be very nice to it. This is the only way in which um, I can safely touch piano strings. That will uh, put my silk scarf very gently and lovingly over the strings to protect them. In case you feel like imitating a bow on a piano.
this is a crazy thing if I don't get my glove off in the about 33, uh, half a second that I have, I have to, I'm condemned to play the entire piece with my left hand in a glove, which is slightly tricky. But you always pull it off. At the end. At the end, yes. We're going to continue now with one of the classics of the great American songbook, Body and Soul. It's personally one of my very, very favorite songs. And of course, the songwriters wrote a fantastic um, little composition. Um, but it's way bigger than that for me. Actually, the legacy of performers by the great African-American jazz musicians, Louis Armstrong, Billie Holiday, of course, the very famous Coleman Hawkins, John Coltrane, this great legacy left by these great masters of African-American music are truly the, um, how can I say, the, the, the pillar, the, the immense edifice that is left to us. And so this is a shout out to that great tradition. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we're going to continue with a piece from the Klezmer music repertoire. This is a piece that was played often in Eastern Europe uh, before the Second World War, the great Eastern European Jewish culture that thrived um, Poland, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine. This is where my great-grandparents came from, my cultural heritage. And weddings were a big thing, and they lasted a long time, maybe a week. And during those times, people were visiting each other, and musicians were walking through the streets with the various family members playing music. And this was one of the kind of songs that they might have played. It's um, in Yiddish, it's called Der Gassen Nigen, and in English, that means the street song. Thank you. 
next piece we're going to play for you is written by one of the great Moldavian Jewish masters named Emil Kroitor. And I was lucky enough to meet um, Emil back in 1989 in Kishinev. I um, met him. Um, he was actually playing in the ho uh, hotel where I was staying. He was playing um, in the restaurant there. And, uh, but he was, he was off that night, so the bartender gave me his phone number. And I don't know how we communicated, kind of a broken um, German um, slash Yiddish. I, I guess he was Jewish. He, as, sound, as soon as he found out I was Jewish, he poured me like every variety of Moldavian wine, um, gave me Emil's phone number, and uh, then I met Emil. Um, and his son, and we played music, and we celebrated, and it was a, an incredible time, still in the Soviet Union um, in Moldavia. So this is a souvenir of that, uh, of that beautiful encounter with Emil Kroitor back in 1989, and this is our uh, take on it, which is called Moldavian Journey.
Thank you very much. So we're going to finish the concert now with a piece of Jewish klezmer music, a celebratory piece. Um, the Gassen Negan that we played for you before was kind of in the preparing of the wedding. And this would be the full-on wedding, people going crazy. Uh, back in the day when I started playing klezmer music, um, I saw people dancing with their hats on fire. It, was, it, it can get pretty wild. So this is a crazy klezmer dance, and I'm going to precede it with a solo of mine, which I title Synagogue Wail.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much to this very enthusiastic, socially distanced crew here. Um, so yes, so we will do an encore. Absolutely. <laughs> because we can hear all of you on the other side of the cameras. <laughs> right. You can press your applause emo emoji, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we're going to do a composition of mine that um, Kathleen and I then took and rearranged and made into our own duo piece. And this piece is called Offering Nigun, and it was composed back in 2001 when I was working with the dancers Eiko and Koma. And, as, and they built this uh, hill, little hill of earth that they danced on. And I improvised with them. And at one point, this melody flew into my fingers. This is Offering Nigun.
to Mountain Lake PBS, to Angela Brown, Hill and Hollow. What a great experience to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Be safe and be well. Look after yourselves. Thank you so much.